is good news and bad news. I mean, the good news is that the United Nations is made up of 192 member states, and so that means that you have the whole perspective of the whole world. There's bad news too, which is that you represent 192 countries, and so therefore you have to pay attention to a variety of different perspectives. One of the frustrations for us is that it's difficult for us to move as quickly as we think we should. This is a very large organization, and there are a lot of rules. Things move very slowly. It takes too long for having troops on the ground. Peacekeeping is an expensive business, $8 billion a year, and we have to make sure that it's spent wisely, but we can't wait six months to buy a generator. The core challenge is getting stuff to people that need it and doing it fast. We are assigned by the international community to complete a task, but we aren't resourced appropriately to do the tasks they give us. One of our biggest problems today is the lack of enablers, helicopters being one example. Perhaps there are 10,000 UN peacekeepers in eastern Congo. That's true, but that's a territory the size of most of Europe. So you're very dependent on air assets. We don't have everything we need. There's never enough soldiers. There's never enough civilians. There's never enough commitments. One of the lessons of the 1990s for us, where we experienced a series of failures, Rwanda, Bosnia, I'd even argue Liberia and Somalia, was that there are things you can do and there are things that you can't. Peacekeeping is not the right tool for every job. The biggest mistakes have come where peacekeepers have been deployed, where there isn't a peace to keep, with insufficient force to meet the kind of conflict they faced on the ground, and without the political will of the member states. Peacekeepers on the ground have an obligation to protect civilians, but that also means that the member states that send the peacekeepers there have an obligation to ensure that they have the resources to do that. Peacekeeping may not be always the right choice, but it can be a right tool if assisted and supported in a robust way. Political support and material support and logistical and financial support. This will make UN peacekeeping operations much more effective and mobile. Peacekeeping operations should also appear very high on the political agenda of their own countries. What we need is the political support of all of the very powerful member states and regional member states to keep the parties on track. Without that, the mission is a sort of band-aid that's been left to its own devices. I think this is a big machine, and being a big machine, you need to work a lot to produce change. Are we there? Far from it. Uh, do we have a lot to do? Absolutely. We need to recognize we have people coming from more than 100 countries. Making sure that they all adhere to the same code of conduct is our challenge. We do have cases of misconduct. Any army anywhere, and probably any city anywhere, which comprises largely 200,000 young, largely men, is going to have issues regarding conduct. When those who are sent overseas under the UN's flag to try to help people out of the most desperate situations instead cause harm, it causes great damage. One incident of sexual exploitation and abuse by a United Nations peacekeeper can undermine the entire work of a mission which has been literally fighting and dying to try to help protect the local population for years. There are still a few bad apples and I think what we're trying to do is to ensure that those people do not continue to work in this peacekeeping mission. One is still one too much. We have to admit ourselves that we have still very large room to improve. Peacekeeping is also evolving, depending upon the needs and demands and also situations. We need to properly manage how we can make our peacekeeping operations most efficient, mobile and effective. I would like the UN to become a much more creative, flexible towards new ideas. If we can actually get rid of some of those bureaucratic approaches, I think we might actually find much better ways of doing things. I think the thing we need to change is we need to be willing to take more risk. We assume the risk rather than those people who are living in war zones, who don't have things to eat, who are getting attacked, women are getting raped. They're the ones who are facing the big risk. We need to try and take some of that risk off of them and put it on the UN. And that means changing the way we do our business.